Hello everybody and welcome to another basing technique tutorial. This is going to be sort of a new version of something that I actually included on an army painting series and that's trying out some different types of snow techniques. I actually have another product that I didn't have back then but since this is also the Song of Ice and Fire we're gonna try and do some additional blood technique things on here too and I've got a few different things we'll try especially since I just posted the old painting pyramid blood techniques I thought you might get a nice little comparison now what we'll do on this first unit is we're going to use our more typical secret weapon crushed glass realistic water technique because I want that to be consistent on here but I've also got a few other units now here we've got some just some free folk raiders and I only have one that's got the crushed glass we're going to try a few other things like the Valhau and Blizzard and the Vallejo environment we're also maybe even going to play around with a little bit of the secret weapon see we got the snow right here it's just uh, basically some flakes that's going to be more of the, the combo techniques now I do have a few other miniatures here these are not actually finished but some of them have some tree branches maybe we even get a chance to do icicles it's not real important because you've seen that in other things I just want to have enough basis to try these different techniques especially since this one right here that's going to be more of our traditional uh, what you call it the crushed glass method now here is a unit completely done in that method so we've got the Bolton's bastards girls here see they got their their blood that also creeps out onto the movement tray itself and it's just it's a super simple thing it's so easy now the difference is for the most part when you're using these other products like say this you don't get it to seep in like this it, it basically just sits on the top I want to see if maybe adding this stuff might help get us that technique because when you use those other things like the Vallejo environment the Citadel GW stuff it's more like just putting red paint on top of white paint these are actually crystals and you're really gonna see that if you haven't seen the crushed glass at work before so what we'll do is we'll our first set is gonna be those cave dwellers and that song of ice and fire and we're gonna essentially replicate what we've got here snow everywhere on the movement tray it's gonna be a pretty long segment and then we'll do some shorter ones where we try out the other stuff now if you're wondering why so okay well, so why are you doing two techniques on one these two guys here are very similar I mean there there's a minimal difference between the two so and especially if you combine it with the snow over the top you'd never be able to tell the difference between the two you would be able to tell the difference between that however and the crushed glass most definitely you would see the difference so what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll set this up here next and we'll be right back let's get to work with our first and um, I guess the priority basing snow basing method so oh, this little thing right here it says do not shake you I don't know exactly why not you just don't want to shake it it says like in tiny little letters here do not shake and all of us painters what's the first thing we do when we grab a jar we grab it and shake it even with this do not shake on there I still sometimes want to grab it and just shake it like it's a jar of paint so that's one little thing and in here now there is let's see what it says warning contains crushed glass that's not a suggestion or something like that that is that's what's in there there's crushed glass in there tiny little beads of crushed glass now as long as you don't plan on eating them or blowing the stuff and getting it all over the place you should be just fine I've used this stuff for years clearly I am not blind I haven't injured myself so it can be used very safely this little thing right here which is just a little lid to a butter thing it's very handy because you can mix it all here you even have a little trough here you could put water in there if you want to thin things down or clean your brush and, and this way now it, it's pretty much contained and you just throw this thing away 
Now what we'll do is we'll throw a little bit of this out and a little bit of this. I learned the hard way that this stuff has a finite working time. That's just the reality of the situation. I once made a gigantic batch of it and halfway through I had a basically a big ball of glass and that wasn't that made sad face. We don't like sad face. So what I think I'm going to do is actually take these guys, the ones that haven't been done yet, out of the trail. There's only a few in here. So I'll just take these couple of guys out. We'll leave the tray off to the side for right now. Because what we want to do is <clears throat> we want to do this, let the snow have a chance to really set up and dry, and then we'll try doing our blood effects. So I'm going to get the snow off to the side here, and let's put down some realistic water here. And that's about the most that I ever throw out there at once. Again, you could use more, but this, this case, more is not more. More can just be a big giant ball of glass. And we'll put out about this much. You can always add more. Subtracting is really tough. So let's just start to get this mixed together here. Just moving some things out of my way. You also want to have some clean water because this will absorb whatever. If your water has a little bit of paint junk in it or something like that, it's going to absorb that and you're not going to be happy. So I think as you see this mixed together here, that is a very watery melted snow. This is where it's easier to add, kind of like with plaster. So let me add a little more and then you mix again and you see how your mix is. And as we blend this in, that should be just about enough. Because see how that's, it's not just whiter, but see how it kind of stands, basically sort of stands up on its own? That's what you want. And you saw that trough just collected some of the excess pieces of glass that wanted to wander away. There, that is... That's very nice. Now you could continue to use this larger brush or you could use a smaller one. I was just experimenting with that today. Now normally I don't have a bunch of skulls all over my bases so this <clears throat> created a little bit of a challenge. I'm just gonna move these guys out of the way because I'm just gonna end up there. So this way, so I'm taking a, a nice decent amount here, but I'm able to tamp it down between the skulls. And you can see this has a pretty clearly defined height to it. I'm going to try and zoom in here a couple of steps. That's just about there. Now you put the stuff on. See how I just sort of tamp that down a little bit? I didn't realize for the longest time you could do that, just sort of put it down and then kind of tamp it in place, almost sculpt it a little bit. I just, I didn't know. Sometimes you just never know until you try stuff. And with this, I'm going to tell you right now, it's one of those acquired knowledge type things. I can't, I can show you how to use this and you can get some very similar results but you will have to just play with it on your own. See I can even plug in, there's a little bit of a gap there. I can plug that in, let's get a little another bit of that right out here. Maybe that's all we put there. Let's try this again on another guy here. We'll just like I said, build in that pile of snow there. Now we'll just work this down into the crevices. And if you, if I feel like it's just not, if it's too watery or whatever, you could, in theory, and I've done this before, even on some some videos, you could just basically pour some of the straight up crushed glass, and almost use this as 
sort of like a, like glue, like you would be pouring gravel onto a base where you've got some glue already. Now I don't have any grass tufts on these, so we can't do the what you've seen me do on some other ones where we sort of spread out the the snow the crushed glass snow out onto the tips of the static grass. Eventually you will see that maybe on the other factions like the, the Starks and the Night's Watch, those actually have some foliage on them, so we'll be doing that there. Now, the other thing too that I did on these guys was to have a little bit of the snow on their backs here. So let's just pile up a little bit of that. I know it's a little bit tough to see because, well, it's kind of on the shiny side. So there's our first couple there. Now here, these can be a little bit of a challenge because you want your snow to be sort of cascading down a bit. Question is how heavy do you make your snow piles, I suppose? And being consistent is can be a challenge. Now see there, I was just about to put a big old blob of the snow in there and I realized, no, that's actually an overhang. So that didn't make much sense. So that's why I moved that over to here. And now I'll just I'll mix up some more. I'm going to throw a little bit in there. So you can see as this dries out, see how that gets much more clumpy? Let's mix ourselves another little batch right here. All right. Like so, let's get out some, some of our crushed glass. And it, it comes as a set, but that realistic water, you can use it for other things besides just for snow effects, which is neat. I use it for, uh, say you paint over some eyes or something that you want to have a little bit of glossiness to it. So here we go. Now you can see this has a lot of body to it. It's not very melty snow. And I'll just I'll go with that. Now maybe f I think on the the Lannisters they had more of a melted snow look by comparison because well maybe winter hadn't completely arrived there yet. I'm gonna see if I can maybe zoom in one more there. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good view. I'll have to probably zoom out a bit when we do the rest of the tray. Here, let's get the... Sometimes you just put some out and then you sculpt it afterwards. Like this. See, I just... I'm tamping down on that. And <clears throat> it all starts to just level out. Same thing here. Now, do I want to have snow that overhangs the edge? Again, I, I realize that's very stark and white. I actually have it turned... Here, let's turn the brightness down a bit. Maybe that's going to... Ah, that should help a little bit. I had it turned down, but I had to turn it down some more. Now, these bases, they're going to consume a fair amount of the snow. Now, what I could even do is, say, really build this up here and then have an icicle hanging down. I don't know if we'll be able to get to that here. I didn't want this to be all about the icicle. That's a whole other matter right there. And this is more about comparing the, the various types of snow. There will be plenty of other videos where icicles will be part of the Part of it, and I already I already have some of the on the workbench sessions with that, but we don't really have a lot of direct comparisons other than that one army painting series. So we'll set him aside. 
I will use this batch of snow here. Now this is the other thing too, the less of the water effects or the more this starts to set up. You saw how that didn't really want to grip on the edge there. That is, that's something else you would have to deal with too. Just something to keep in mind. Now here I am going to use, because this is a little more dry and more clumpy, I want more clumps of snow on uh, the fur that's on his back here instead of it being all smooth. Now this guy could use some too. And as I've said many times before, I, I walked to the store that's less than two blocks away and a, just a light snow. Then I walk in there and I, I look like I've been out in the Arctic for a week climbing whatever glaciers. And it's just a, less than a two block walk to the store in relatively light snow. Go figure. So I thought that's why I started to include it. I did it on my bolt action stuff and I'm doing it here on my Song of Ice and Fire stuff. To me it just made sense. I know when it comes to fantasy figures or things that are only inch and eighth tall, realism is relative. You, know, you can only do so much. There's time and cost and everything else. You, know, you could have it look perfectly, completely, totally realistic. And that would be fantastic. But what's what's the goal? Are you a model railroader or doing some museum quality thing? Which is why maybe that Valhallen Blizzard and the, the Vallejo snow texture, man, that is perfectly fine for you because, well, you're not going to do blood effects or you don't need to have snow that maybe is partially melted in some places. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's why I'm trying to show you a few different methods here so you don't think, well, oh, gee, uh, I don't have the crushed glass or I don't want to use the crushed glass, so now I, ooh, I can't do the snow like that. I'm, I'm trying not to restrict things. I'm trying to just present as many options as possible. Here, let's get some of this out here. I don't want to lose that skull that's there. And as always, I have to remember to sort of tamp this stuff down. Because I forget that sometimes, and then I sort of regret it later. I wish, oh man, I wish I had tamped that down. If you forget, you can go back in, just add another layer of snow. So you can do that. You can add more, more layers. Now here, sometimes I like to keep the miniatures on there as I do this. Because it's a reminder that, you know what, I need to leave room for those bases. i got to get in there and be able to pull these guys out. And as anyone who knows this game knows, figures get removed and then replaced on these bases and movement trays all the time constantly throughout the game. Now, <laughs> I don't know, maybe in the case of Free Folk, they just kind of get removed <laughs> and, and then just leave the table. But hey, that's just uh, it's a discussion for a battle report there. And hopefully once convention season is done and I've done some terrain tutorials and made some nice a nice setup for the Song of Ice and Fire stuff, then we can start doing some nifty little battle reports for that. So again, here I'm just looking for places to drop this, thinking gaps in between the rocks. Maybe, you know, depending on how much snow we have left over, whatever, we can add a little bit more. But for now, here yeah, I'm going to I'm going to clean this out. It's usually not a bad idea to, to do that, just to clean it out once in a while. And I'll tell you this too, whatever water, don't put this in your regular water dish. I use like a blister pack or even little things like this. 
you want that to be your crushed glass water because like I said once the water evaporates or whatever or when I'm cleaning out the brushes you know with my rubbing alcohol once the rubbing alcohol evaporates you can see now they're all dried and sort of coagulated together but you can see the little bits of crushed glass in there so it, well let's put it this way I do not recommend ever licking brushes under any circumstance I don't care if you're never going to use crushed glass or oils but just as a person I had say in art school for many years the brushes never went in your mouth that's I know people like to do that whatever it does something to the tip of the brush uh, you can have that habit if you want but there's just too many times I think it's going to come back and bite you in a proverbial way. If that's not a habit, then you never have to worry about that. So I'm going to see if I can't just, I want to use what's in this brush. I want to, I'm just going to kind of scrape away at some of this stuff here and I know I want to use my smaller brush. Don't want to There, we'll just go back to our smaller brush here one second. That's better. A little more control over the snow there. I have to say of it's like when I was telling you that there's a an acquired knowledge to this for years. I mean for a long time I would end up with snow that just never really looked white it always looked kind of dirty now that could have been my paint water too was dirty or my brush was dirty and I think what was happening was I was just not mixing enough of the crushed glass in there and, and this will sound weird I didn't fluff it up enough and that's only something that I've noticed recently like in the last few months because well between doing all the winter world war ii stuff and all of the song of ice and fire i've only done a few several hundred snow bases and see see this what i'm doing right here where i kind of scrape up and try and look at how light and fluffy that is look at that big old ball of the snow there and then when i would apply it and it would dry it would really be nice and bright basically the way I wanted it to be. It wasn't like it was more, uh, I was putting more of the, the crystals in there and making it dry. It was still the same, what would you say, level of, it, had this, it wasn't the melted type snow, but yet it still looked more like snow and less like just street sludge, you know, the stuff that's been melted by road salt for a few days. There, there's melted snow and then there's just that kind of gray snow and we don't want gray snow also you have to keep in mind and this is something I have to remind myself constantly that this stuff will dry a bit lighter especially when you have it to this consistency you can put it on this oh you know that looks a little bit true translucent. I'm going to throw another layer on there. I'm going to throw more of the crystals in. Sometimes you have to just tell yourself not to do that. I just figured since this is not actually, since it's not an army painting tutorial, the discussion is always different there. The discussion there really does focus a lot on time, expense, what's the what are you going for what's the overall are you, are you looking for this on your whole army is it just one unit maybe folks that are watching this you're more doing the the competition painting or for lack of a better term you're doing one-offs you're not interested in doing entire units like this so investing that extra time and doing the snow effects on your one piece or your one diorama that's no big deal
but again that's that's something that is always talked about on those army painting videos it's just kind of the practical nature of material what is the time worth it is the cost worth it so I'll mix up I think one more batch just might do it now I believe the Spearwives basing video shows you how we did the stuff with the the skulls here and the skeleton sheets. Those are from Green Stuff World. So this is definitely more melted, no doubt about it. I need to get me some more of the crushed glass in here. And then not a lot. And you you just be surprised at how much how much you can do with this. I just the other day did that unit of the the bastards girls there, the dogs and the archer guys. I just did that yesterday, and I thought for sure I was gonna have nothing left for today. And there was there's plenty, and there's still gonna be enough after this one. So it does go it goes a long way. It doesn't seem like it because I've had to mix several batches, but the back batches that I've mixed were actually really tiny. And that was just kept intentional so that it's easier to control them. Now, do they turn rock solid? Well, I mean, look at this stuff out here. That is mostly unusable, and it's only been a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long. I'm not going to take the time to look at my timer right now. So we're just filling in these filling in these gaps but still leaving enough space for the miniature to still find its way into that there. And it's important with the snow when you're doing something like this, I've seen a bunch of units with the snow where it just sort of looks like these little random snow piles and they're very isolated and I, I I don't know if that was done to conserve the snow or something like that not quite sure all I know is that it does it seems a little bit odd when you have just these little islands of snow whereas here I basically crafted a specific landscape for this snow because I want the skulls sort of sticking out through it Maybe I'll put some snow on top of the, the rocks or whatever. Or maybe not. I, I kind of like it actually a little bit more open. So let's get this like so. And just, I'm going to take a few of the scrapings here and there so you know, I'm, I'm just gonna leave the rocks sticking through the snow for right now so what we'll do is we'll call that good we're gonna just back out a few steps here and let's get our guys back in and I've numbered these come on get in there there we go I just have to remember not to stick my finger in my snow there we go. Yeah, I just want to get these things out of the way because we got some more got some more snow techniques to do. There we go. And you can hear those magnets kind of click into place. Now you see how we don't have islands of snow. It, it's pretty continuous there. A little more continuous. So what we'll do now, gonna let this stuff dry. Set this aside. We're gonna try those other those other ones. I think we're gonna try the Valhallen Blizzard next. And we'll try that maybe with some of that snow flock too. So we'll be right back. 
time to give this a try. That's the GW Valhalla and Blizzard. So I'm trying to just kind of block out the lights here. Let me turn that away. Ah, now you can see. That'll give you a little bit of an idea of just the how clumpy that is by comparison to say. Here, look at that. We'll just put a big old blob of that out here. Let's get some more. And this right away. Ah, good. I think I still have. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to really see the difference. We can see how, see there's transparency here in the crushed glass, and here there's no transparency, there's just white. Now what we'll do is we'll take a few of these here, we'll do, let's try the, we'll do, let's see, we got four, there's two, four, two, four, six, and yeah, we'll do a couple more with the Valhalla and Blizzard, and we'll save the last five for there, like so. Put these guys aside here. Now, just like with the other stuff, now here it's a little more, just even the clumps are different. And that's really, really bright. I mean, that's very bright, but just like I did with the other stuff. See how I'm focusing on getting that down in between those skulls? And I'm basically sculpting with it a little bit. The, the motion is very similar. I'm going to see if I can't trying to actually zoom in a bit here for you. Sorry, this is a little difficult. There. I want to say you have a longer working time with this maybe than the, the crushed glass stuff. So I think you can take your time a little bit more. It is a little bit easier to manipulate, I gotta say, because it's a finer material. Uh, there we go. I think you can now again it's there's pretty much no other way to do this except for it to look extremely white now I'm just going to position this up and you can see what I do here is I try to actually trying to thin that out there I don't want every single area to be just a big plop of this stuff especially with troops tramping across the surface here it, it makes sense that in some it would just be trampled snow it wouldn't be this pure little pile of fresh fallen snow and all these guys somehow miraculously avoiding all of that fresh snow and not doing anything to it i could i you know if i had other free folk or something I, you know some guy i could actually saw them off the base like I did to these guys and then sort of make footprints in the snow. Now look at what we're doing here. I hope you, I think you can see what's happening here. So we're doing this and you see how we're, we're just thinning that out. This is the only way I have found to sort of simulate that secret weapon look. Now what we're going to do on some of the other ones is just add a little bit of this snow flock here. I think maybe on the last two I might do that. I just want you to see the difference. I think here, just for fun, we're going to have a little bit of a snow blob here. That, that's a very highly technical and scientific term, of course. We just we sculpt it the exact same way. So just start pressing that down. The idea is that it kind of hangs over the edge there. So let's move him off to the side. Hopefully I numbered these. <laughs> I think once they get magnetized, numbers follow. So I think I'm I think I'm all good. But the same thing. See what I'm doing there? I'm 
just sort of see, spreading that out, make it almost look like again the snow has been trampled. I think with the the video that I did on the Soviets, well, first of all, only one group of folks can see it, the, the army painting folks, but because there was such a frenzy in trying all the different snow methods, I didn't really get down into this kind of in-depth discussion of how to maybe match one effect or the other f together. And then this idea of the, see, like, like this, taking that snow and instead of making it just one whole piece, look at this, I'm almost dry brushing with the snow. So it's continuous. It's not just isolated blobs. I have no idea. Maybe it's just, well, I think I, the reason why you see snow blobs, we'll just call them that, is that it's the easiest way to apply it. This, clearly, it takes a little more time to do each guy this way. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually starting to see this. I don't want to say it's drying out, but it's definitely... It's definitely stiffer than it was when I first started working with it. So maybe the working time is about the same as the crushed glass. For the heck of it, I don't know why, but we're going to do the... I want to have that snow sort of hang over the edge of the rock. I don't know why. It just... Sometimes it's fun. It's... There's times where I just say the heck with it. I just want to have some fun here. Again, realism, maybe not the, the true goal always. This stuff, it really is, in, in some ways, super close to the crushed glass as far as even here and the way it, it the, the clumps and the size of the clumps, it's very similar. Heck, even the little bit of semi glossy residue that it leaves behind that's kind of similar now it's been a long time since I've actually used the the Vallejo snow I think it's called the surface tech whatever it's called so it'll be interesting to compare that to this because in some ways I'm liking this a little bit better than the Vallejo stuff you can't quite see what it is that I'm after and, and it's hard to put into words unless you have kind of used all of these things several times it's tough to describe uh, how you know those comparisons it's sort of like comparing one type of airbrush to another when you've never used an airbrush someone can talk to you about trigger size and all this other kind of stuff and you'll say okay does it really matter to me what the difference in the trigger is? Someone who uses them all the time, that could have a massive difference. Another place you will see me, and I think I'm going to wait. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, I might want to wait a little bit. Is We want to do that snow that's on the back of them. So see here, we're just, it's almost like we scumbled this stuff on. Look at this. This is the nearest way I can figure to simulate that semi-melting snow using the GW stuff. Uh, let's do this again. We've got our last one here. Again, this is the Valhallen Blizzard. We're just going to put this around his foot, maybe over his foot. And I actually want this to go up the side of our rocks there. Now there is a convenience too. So let's say mm, appearance is not a, a deal. It's not, not a big issue, but just ease of use. Well, of course this might be a bit easier to use because you you don't have to do anything to mix. You don't have to worry about getting that mixture right. And if that's if that's what works for you, hey, that's fine. I'm not gonna 
I, I try never to say don't use this or don't use that I just try to say here's the the pros and cons I guess you would say of this or here's here's the benefits of this here's the benefits of that maybe the the benefits for one person would not be benefits for somebody else so here we're just see we're gonna flatten this out and we want to cover all of those rocks there now what I'm gonna do oh let's let's just grab one of these other guy here let's try this guy I put some more of this out and I want to actually play a little bit with that the snow flock Let's just grab a little more of this now. I can tell you this though. Now, okay, maybe price-wise, I this might be the more expensive way to go. This Valhalla Blizzard, because I've only done these five now six guys, and I'm seeing a significant drop in that little bottle there. Whereas that secret weapon, thing, like I said, I did that two. I think I've done five or six units with that one. That one container. I don't know how many units this container could do. I might only be able to do a couple. So that's there's that now. Now we got a price thing going on where I'm sure this Valhalla and Blizzard is a more expensive product than the secret weapon stuff. Just about every GW product is more expensive than any other comparable product. Is the convenience of just being able to pull it out and use it is that worth the extra cost I know in other situations I've said you know what my time is money I would rather just have the thing or whatever that just gets the thing done even if it costs more or you know they have to use more of it I, if I can get more things done that's all I care about and that's perfectly fine too Here we're just gonna, there. I'm gonna put a little bit, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm spreading this out here, and then we are going to see how easy it is to get this on our tree branch. Now it's, I want to say it's about the same. Now of course I could water this down too. I, I guess I should have. So, well, here, I just mix some water in here, completely change that, and it should stick. Oh yeah, it sticks much easier to my tree branch. Again, all that is, it's it's pretty simple. It is just dried foliage. You can get it pretty much at any craft store. So that's that's really fun. So I get watered down. Speaking of which, we are going to take some of that watered down stuff and we're going to apply it to a few areas here just, just for fun, see what happens. Now there's something going on here and it's going to happen on several of these. So that's the Gita, uh, Green Stuff World Intensity inks. You can't see it, but the snow is actually yellowing there that's the so if I use any kind of uh, green stuff world intensity inks there it's going to leach through and affect the snow now I can you know change that with blood effects or whatever so here we go so I am taking the snow flock here and good now you might not really see what is happening here but what I'm doing is essentially dusting this over the top and it's creating a whole nother layer of texture so instead of just being the blobby Valhalla and Blizzard now maybe there's a little bit of dimension to it so I'm gonna do the same thing here on this guy and it's mostly just the 
it's, it's literally just water. Now watch what happens. So we got the hood there. So as we scatter this over the top of him, see, look at that. So some of that, it, it just create almost like there's individual, individual snowflakes on his head there. To me, this is kind of the the fun aspect of doing the the non what you what would you say the non secret weapon crush glass method. And once again, we're going to do the same thing. See, we pile that up there. I could just leave it like that. It's not horrible, but there's a little added texture here. It's not that hard. And there's another reason we're doing this, because if we are going to add blood effects here, maybe the blood effects will seep into that snow flock, which they wouldn't do on just these straight up, which what I've got here in this little vat, that's just basically clumpy white paint. And that, it just, you'll have basically clumpy, glossy red paint on top of clumpy, glossy white paint. And I don't know if that's really something that I want. So once again, we're going to get in here with our... Maybe I don't do it absolutely everywhere. Maybe just a few places. But to me, that makes it look a little bit more powdery. Ah, there you go. Now you can sort of see the, the powder in there. I'm going to do some of that here, too. It's not going to make it look like crystals, but it's the next best thing. And if you get it while it's still wet, it's going to do it. And I haven't actually tried this with the GW stuff yet, so that's kind of neat. This is the first time I've tried two together, and I definitely would call it a success. I think that worked out just fine. Now... Again, some of these, the ones that turn yellow, that is the, unfortunately, that's what the Green Stuff World Intense Ink will do if it's not sealed. But I do know from other ones, other units, the doing the blood effects can definitely help cancel that out. So, again, see how we've got now a whole different texture on his, yeah, let's move him down. So here we've got more of a solid snow texture, but now it just it's a little bit sitting on top of his hood there. I I like that. I think that's pretty nifty. Here's let's just do one more thing. One more thing here. Okay, I'm gonna go here on his boots now. I I want to water this down. We're essentially just think of it more like liquid glue. All right, so we did that, and we're going to go back into this. And the idea is... See, now we've got some snow on his boots there. Sorry, I keep moving it up, but I should be moving it down. That's another fun thing to do. It's just like what we did to their, to their hoods and such. Now, we're going to try one more with this. One more. I know I haven't painted the miniature yet, but I, did, I wanted enough examples. And this one with that big old rock like that, to me, posed an interesting, well, not a challenge, but it, I thought it would be an interesting opportunity to show some different ways to apply this. Wow, we're really going through this big time. So once again, food for thought. Ah, uh, here we go. And I know I love the the crushed glass stuff because it lets me do more, more effects. But if I couldn't get it, if this is all I had, I think I could adapt enough different uh, 
have different techniques to this and make it do most of what I want it to do. I know there's maybe some folks uh, say in, in the EU or whatever, maybe the GW stuff, this this Valhalla Blizzard is a whole lot easier for it to get. Well, then it becomes in your math, you know, the, your situation. It's definitely well worth it just to use this stuff. All right, I just want to there. Now I can't do the wintry stuff on his cloak and such yet because well he hasn't really been painted yet oh well, we have to get that settled down in between the skulls the one thing I can say is that this stuff like I could leave these skulls be painted a bit darker than say with the secret weapons set, and it's going to really be a noticeable difference between the two color wise and value wise so we did the same thing we just kind of a little scattering of the snow flock there now I've got there's a quick little comparison now again they're kind of burned out with the camera I can just uh, point the light as far away as I can ah that's a little better now so this one that we just did it's obviously going to be more of a white there this I can see the little crystals I mean, it's like a little a bunch of little tiny points of light on this ah you can see as I move, see little crystals there look at that there's one like right by his left foot there here this is more just a bunch of white paint it's it looks a little bit powdery that's great but that's pretty much the only kind of snow that you can represent. So again, this is the your your secret. Look at that. You can see those crystals there. So we'll what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the Vallejo environment. We'll do those other five guys in the next segment, and then the 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 next one after that we'll do the the movement trait with both of these and see how they really directly compare to each other. So we'll be right back with that. It's time to give our Vallejo environment snow a try here. It comes in a few different size containers. I've got actually a larger one here, but that one's it's a little bit dry because we were using it for some, oh gosh, we're doing, um, terrain. And you're going to see this actually on terrain projects. Now the reason I'm saving that for, well, Song of Ice and Fire terrain, that and Stalingrad terrain. So we're going to do our little thing here so you can sort of see that it's got the same kind of oh, texture to it. Now let's get it out here on the... Now that's a different texture. This is rougher than the Valhalla Blizzard. Without question, definitely rougher. Uh, looking at that, it's... I don't, yeah, you can even see it on the screen even before I do this. So it's much rougher. Now let's see what happens when we when we start to use it. So let's get these guys down here. We'll also try the same thing with the Woodland Scenics snow. Yeah, look at this. As I mix this around, see how that, look at that. That's different than the Valhalla Blizzard which had a tendency for the clumps to separate. So we're seeing a difference here. Now, that's why I used the fresh container, because the other container I would have had to, oh, what would you call it? I would have had to thin it down or add some water to it to basically rejuvenate it a little. And actually, it goes on a little bit differently, too. So I'm surprised that it, like I said, I haven't actually used... I think there was maybe one other video where we tried some of the... Oh, it was a standalone. It was a dark sword. That's what it was. So I don't think it was a direct comparison like this, where we're one after the other doing all three methods. Now, I'm going to see what happens. Okay, I'm going to thin this down here. Ah, now this is the thing that's different. Okay, when you thin this stuff down, you lose any kind of clumping. 
it just it just gets thinned down so that's a quick little notation right there that the Valhallen blizzard once it gets some water in it it still has that uh, that clumping ability whereas this yeah it just kind of turns to water which if I'm trying to do the semi-melted snow maybe that is a handy thing so what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of a so I also have a gap here on his on his foot because you know it's the tree branch or tree bark basing and I'm just trying to here filling a little bit of a gap and I think you can see what we're trying to we're trying to have a little bit of a snow overhang there because why not and I got the same thing going here we have a foot that's kind of suspended a little bit the reason I didn't fret that at the time is because I knew I was going to be adding snow now if you say well okay what if you're not adding snow well that's where some static grass or some flock or whatever is handy so we're just going to do this and now we'll do some more of these so one big thing I'm seeing is that where it's been thinned down it does have a very different look to that Valhallen blizzard I, I can see a lot of brush strokes in there now if I add that the woodland scenics snow flock over the top of it that could change that but just right off the bat one of the big differences I see is that when I thin it down you don't, you don't have those clumps and it, you can sort of see the brush strokes as a result that's why I didn't do a bunch of well I didn't do any come to think of it I didn't do any practice figures with this because your or my reaction to it is, is worth more to you I don't want to say more than your own reaction but if you hear me say be really surprised by something or notice the difference enough to really say it over and over again to me that just has more impact and I think it might have more use this stuff I do know it I think it has a little bit less of a working time we'll see how it compares to the Valhalla and Blizzard more directly but see here I forgot you almost have to sort of dry brush this stuff but then again you now you start to go into that territory of am I gonna be having brush strokes or am I gonna see brush strokes in my snow application which well that's probably not what you're looking for Oh, just we're gonna got what a couple more of these guys to do now here I'm trying to take advantage of just the texture of the base so this is what I mean I'm just going to it's essentially like a dry brush I'm just it's it's not a whole lot of this stuff in there so I have to approach it differently I, I, that's something that I see right away here so I'm going to work with this stuff. Got to approach it a little bit differently. It doesn't. It's so similar to the GW stuff, but that is enough of a. It's a significant enough difference for me to think. Okay, I, I have to treat these a little bit differently in the approach. Okay, we got this one here. Hmm, let's go this way. And we definitely want to have some snow on that big old log there. Okay, yeah, this is starting to thicken up, so I mean it's it's very workable. It's not like it's on the verge of not being able to be used. But I just I noticed the difference in it. there is and this is both of these versus the secret weapon stuff as I tamp it down like this I'd almost need to put some water on it because since it is more paint like 
it tends to sort of stick to the brush and form these little almost like snow flame whereas with the secret weapon stuff when you tamp that glass down it just stays down and that to me that makes actually a lot of sense that it would do that okay so what we'll do is we're gonna put these guys the snow on here and then I'm just gonna grab the overall movement tray and then we'll start putting this stuff there because we want that to have a chance to dry. So got one more of these guys to do. All right, and this one I may may want some deeper snow on this rock here. You can see why I didn't bother painting all of the different colors on the rock. I've done that in the past and realized, well, yeah, that's 20 minutes I just could have saved. I didn't need to be doing that. So here I'm actually grabbing a little bit of water so that I can sculpt that without it sticking to the brush. But that's the one thing I do notice is that both of those stick to the brush way more because you know here when have you seen one of these clumps fall off the brush? Maybe it's happened once, but the secret weapon stuff is very likely to just kind of fall off the brush. So something to think about. Again, now here I'm almost just doing a little bit of that watery glaze. Why? This is the last guy, and I want to try and do the little trick with the Woodland Scenics snow. So what I'm trying to do here is, again, have a little bit of a pile there. And we're going to water this down a little bit here. I will say, and because I've used this in the past on other things, the one thing I believe you can do with this that you can't do with the Valhalla and Blizzard is almost, almost make it you can almost stipple this stuff on like it is paint. Well, that makes sense because we're getting those brush marks. So if it does act a little bit more like paint, then getting brush marks makes sense. So I'm not going to do this absolutely everywhere, but we're just doing it you know, where we've got. There. Maybe for consistency's sake, I'm just going to do this on every single guy. So let's, let's grab our other ones here. We're going to do the same, same thing. Like you do. Grab our Woodland Scenic Snow Flock here and just drizzle that over the top. There we go. Oh, for the heck of it, I'm also going to do the same thing on his boots. Uh, this is something I used to do with the the historical stuff was because I knew I was going to do a lot of mud spatter and such that I really wouldn't paint the boots and mostly just kind of cover them in mud. So I just sort of covered the boot in snow. See that? right there because I've had that happen too I've come in the house and good grief that it's like I picked up half the snow on the ground inside my freaking boots it's like my socks were wet and how in the world did that get down in there so I'm just gonna it's the same thing so just a few of these there it's fur anyway it might really catch some of that snow flock under any circumstances so just going to drizzle that on like we've done. One more guy to do here. It's also the reason I didn't spend a whole lot of time agonizing over things like the fur here and some of the, the stuff on the hoods because this was a, a step that I was expecting to do. So once again, we'll do our little snow flock technique. Let's 
break out our movement tray. So, yeah, we can see there's, oh, let's see, where's a guy that looks an awful lot like him? This one here. You can see the difference as I do this. See how much brighter the one snow is versus the other. But again, this one has more of a crystalline look. Now let's put these out where they're supposed to be. Ironically, that's where he goes. So these are all magnetized and numbered. And you say, well, why are you putting these out here? It's going to be more difficult to get around them. Exactly. I found out the hard way there that if I don't put the miniatures out, I have a tendency to either pile up the snow or something. And if there's an overlap in the base or whatever, all of a sudden I can't get the miniature in there anymore or it won't sit in their level. So hard lessons learned. Okay, that's guy goes there. And I think this is our, maybe there's one more. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the raid leader. He goes over there. And you can see I actually got that little piece of that little tuft of grass there with the snow on top. Now, yeah, I can see. So yeah, that's the green stuff world stuff. It's interacting with that, but we'll just put a bunch of blood effects there and you really just won't notice it very much. So I am going to go back to the where's my GW blizzard. Now, actually, we're going to stick with Vallejo because we got that out on the palette already. Here. Makes sense to just stick. We'll do the front half with that. We'll do the back half with the GW stuff. All right. Let's just go with that much. You can always put more out there later. And here we go. I think this phase is going to be a little bit maybe easier than with the secret weapon crush glass because it wants to stick to the brush more. And I can always then reach for some water to level that down, although I might lose a little bit of my texture that way. Hopefully, oops, <laughs> sorry about that. I need to back out of here. That's better. So we'll just go this route for a little while here. Like I said, we'll do the front couple of rows with this. And then we'll go with the blizzard on the back couple of rows. But no particular reason other than there was still some of this left on the palette there. And I really didn't want to have to clean it. You can see I'm just sort of scumbling away when I want to th essentially thin it down. Okay. Now we're going to get down in between here like we did. Now I can see a big difference in, in the crushed glass snow versus this. What I'm going to probably do is something along the lines of this. Let's see if this works. This is another thing I wanted to try. So effectively I'm just dry brushing this over the top of the crushed glass. I'm trying to create one extra layer. Now maybe the dry brush doesn't quite work so much. There's a little bit of moisture in here. And why am I doing that? Because I'm going to take a little bit of my snow flock here. You can't really see that. I just don't want to get snow flock into the other stuff. So I just put snow flock over the top of that. Now, whether or not, to me, that equalizes it a little bit. Even that, that what I did right there, that seems to help minimize that difference between the two. Now here where I see the snow that's turned yellow, I think hopefully that's dried enough so that maybe another layer 
can go over the top. I will say this, that the, this, the crushed glass is affected much less than the these other two things, the Vallejo and the GW stuff. Yeah, I, I knew there was a possibility that some of those bases were, were done with the GSW inks. So here, here's where we're sort of, we're not making an entire pile of snow there. We just sort of drop, darn it, <laughs> there. All I did was I just dry brushed this over the top. That's all I did. Let's make sure we can keep that on screen for you. And we're just going to go right back here. I am going to make a little bit of a snow pile here, partially to reflect what's going on over here, too. And then maybe what could be fun is on this rock here to have some overhanging snow. At least that's that's pretty well on screen there for you. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Now we've got another, again, another log right here, and just going to. There we are. Now that one that's down in the unit here that's already got the crushed glass, I'll just do a minor dry brush of that over the top. Not a big deal because he's, he's down in the unit there, so I think he'll be okay. And we're going to drop this stuff down in here. I'm trying to leave some of the ground show through. There. Not really worried about that because I'm just going to be putting a bunch of blood effects. But let's say you say, ah, oh, I don't really want that there. I don't want all that accidental snow on his blade. Well, all it takes is a little bit of water. Man, it's gone. Sometimes there were, I don't do it really on, on purpose anymore, but there were a lot of videos where I intentionally did something where it looked like this horrendous mistake and oh my gosh I'm gonna have to start all over again the video is, is done I can't do this anymore and then just you know in a few seconds fix something with some simple solution I guess I still try and do that kind of thing today all right with what's left here I'll put this right there I'm not going to push it too hard. If I start to run a little low, I'll just do a little bit more with the with the Valhalla and Blizzard then. But what I, I want to make sure is that this is active enough that I can get the snow flock over the top of it and it'll still adhere. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave that again for the Valhalla. But here's another case where I have to sort of not go too heavy with the snow. If I want to still be able to get the miniature in there. So apologize for the hand there. This is a case for the camera. And again, doing that little dry brush thing. Now, here is my Woodland Scenic stuff. And we're just going to, again, drizzle that in to a few areas here. Spin that around a little more. It's really not, from a distance, nobody would ever know the difference between this and the crushed glass. And by a distance, I mean even just a couple of feet because are people really going to know what you use? They're just going to see snow. And if it looks pretty decent, all they're going to see is snow that looks pretty decent. Now, with that basically pretty much dried out, now we're going to go to our GW stuff here. 
Wow, just look at the container itself. Let's see how that's very watery in there. Yeah, look at this. So this is almost, oh gosh, how can I even describe it? It's almost like there's little puff balls in here, whereas the other stuff is more like gravel. I know that's sort of a very loose comparison, but, oh yeah, look at this. Now, who knows, maybe the container's a little bit older. Wow, I got used to, I got kind of used to using that Vallejo stuff, because this really is different. That is very different. All right, just once again, looking to have this on screen for you. All I can say is, you know, I, I can't say that, all right, you have to choose between one of these two. It's kind of hard to choose. They both have some interesting properties like this right here. Believe it or not, what it's doing as far as this, what, as I pile it up here, that's closer to the secret weapon stuff. Where And now, see, this is where you don't get as much of the brush stroke effect. Yeah, because see, as I, as I tap this down, the brush doesn't stick to that. It doesn't stick, not the way the Vallejo stuff does. So I, basically, I'm actually starting to see three very distinct materials here, as opposed to one and two others that are pretty much the same thing. I'm starting to see some actual real differences between them. Uh, and I, I realize that you might say, well, okay, we've seen snow before. He's done that before. Well, I haven't done it like this because this is all new to me. I'm seeing things here and making observations that I just haven't made before because I haven't really been able to compare them this directly before and as I say all the time I wanted to do this well as live as possible on camera it, it is obviously recorded it's not a live session but to me I don't know if this is really the, the right stuff for a live session because I want to be able to do these clearly defined segments you know, if this was a live session, it had to just be all one long thing. Yeah, I am really interest, interested in how close this is to, oh gosh, there's no way I could f remember the name of the product. It's something I saw on some model railroading tutorials. And I, I watch those all the time. I would suggest doing that. Uh, actually, was it Kathy Millat is one she's uh, in the UK uh, she uses oh gosh what's it called chinchilla dust uh, tile grout those are things that I'm also going to experiment well not the chinchilla dust probably but the tile grout for sure uh, and the, the what the, the Luke's ABS or whatever he uses oh gosh like they'll take rubbing alcohol and glue and mix that together and that sort of settles down in the crevices and that's more on terrain stuff so you might be seeing things like that so the, the GW snow really works differently gosh here I'm thinking those are two of pretty much the same product only slightly different my guess is that Vallejo and GW are pretty universal for everybody. I think everybody should probably be able to get those. That's why there's three different products here and oh gosh I think actually Green Stuff World makes a snow flock. I'll try that too maybe in just in a separate little video maybe on a Dark Sword miniature or something. I'll find another another one to paint with the snow and we'll try it there kinda like how we use the tall, tall foliage but there's something that has these little tiny balls of foam it's not crushed glass it's tiny tiny microscopic balls of foam and I, I forget what the heck it's called 
but that is something that I was wanting to try. It, it comes from Europe. It's not an easy product to get here. You wouldn't find that just in a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or whatever. So I, I do understand the plight of those who are trying to find something that I tell them about and it's just maybe not easily available in Europe. I think Woodland Scenics is fairly universal. They've been around a heck of a long time. And there's there's a lot of model railroaders in Europe, but there's also a, at least a few here in the U.S. I know we used to do that kind of stuff, too. So we're getting close to the end here. We'll just grab a little more of this, and then we'll do our snow flock. Then we'll let this dry as much as we can and you know, we're not maybe going to do an entire well I, I don't want to do the entire unit with blood effects but we'll, we'll try some of that I don't want the whole thing to have it on there sometimes well what is that sometimes too much is too much definitely this part of the process is easier with this material than with the crushed glass. There is no question about that. That's fairly obvious to me. Yeah, there we go. Just wonder why all of a sudden there was no room there. So we're almost done last little bit here I'll right, we'll just call that good to go maybe I'm going to moisten this up a little bit so that some of the snow flock catches on there and speaking of which here's our snow flock And we'll just drizzle this on as we've done with all the individual bases and with the Vallejo was that ground texture environment texture whatever it's called on the front half of the tray all right so now it's time to give this a, a while to dry like you do and then we'll, we'll do some quick little blood effects on there too so we'll be right back in a jiffy so just like we did with our snow we're gonna try a few different blood uh, tools right here a couple of different mediums and we also want to see what they look like on the different, you know, we got the crushed glass, we got the Vallejo stuff, the GW stuff. I want to see what those are going to look like. Now, you've seen me doing the this sort of combo already, starting with the green stuff world for the lighter blood, then the fresh blood ghost tint, and then if we want some really deep coagulated blood, doing it with the red liner here from Reaper Miniatures. Now we'll also try and incorporate some of this. And I have done this on some videos before. This tends to be very orangey by comparison, I think, to the True Blood. Before I start anything else, I'm going to just throw some out here. I've got a little bit of a... There. So that's the True Blood from... Ah, actually, no, it's just, this is different. Okay, so here, let's get this out there so it's sort of an in-between okay it's a little bit more like the fresh blood so we're also gonna try this too I'm gonna see if I can't thin it down I'm gonna experiment with that real quick here yeah looks like you can sort of thin it down yeah so we're gonna because what I want to do is get the sort of multi-leveled effect here and now this is my regular method on the crushed glass. Actually, no, that was using the uh, contrast paints. So, skip that. Skip that. Let's try, we're going to go traditional method here first on the 
crushed glass. So what I'm going to do is change my camera focus here so you can see what it is I'm doing. Now Now you can really see the sparkly here because of we've, we kind of moved the lights aside. So let us, that's the True Blood, again, yeah, that's the GSW stuff, Green Stuff World. Now we're going to do the Steinal Res Ghost Tint over here. You can see the big difference between those two. Now I already did the weapon here. I gotta figure out, okay, what's directly below that and what hopefully is apparent is this. Couple of different things. So you can see how, now this is more just of a, the actual technique of it here. See how this is being faded? That is something that the crushed glass will let you do and this is the thing we're going to find out soon enough. Look at this. See how we can sp just spread this out because, I mean, it, it, we're painting on glass, basically. I mean, for lack of a better term, that is what we are doing. And that's why there's a little bit of resistance here, and that is, that's helpful. It also seeps down into those cracks there. Now I'm just going to leave that sit for just a second, and then we're going to go with the, the the blood effect stuff. But what I'm going to do is take this guy right here. Now he's one that turned yellow because of all the the intensity inks there. So what we're going to do? Huh? That's interesting. Now I'm going to thin this down. I'm going to see what what happens when I thin it down. Turn this so it's you can see it. I can't see it very well, but uh, you know what? To a degree, it's let me do that now. What's also happening is the wet paint is getting stuck on the the flock that we put down, and that is it's just sort of pushing the flock around. Well, it's it's interesting. It is mixing a bit with the flop but it's not sinking down it's more like it's a sponge <laughs> absorbing it especially when I add the water to it although maybe it's not the worst thing in the world and it could be a little bit skewed too because of the so that's okay it can sort of be done it looks like now I'm gonna actually let this mix together wet into wet but you can see what's happening right here And this is, I'm going a little bit extreme here because I'm trying to hide, obviously, all of the, the yellow snow, which would be great on the Bastards Girls and all the dogs, I suppose. Not so much for these guys. I don't think they would be wetting themselves on the way in. Here, I'm just going to do a couple little blood drops here in the snow. I suppose it can sort of work that way. Eh, you know, it's neither here nor there. Mm, let's try another one, maybe. Here we go. Let's try this guy here. And now this is still using the True Blood, right? Yeah, True Blood. Now we've, again, we've thinned it down. Although, well, it's it's very difficult to create that sort of it, it's it's kind of turning a little bit pinkish. So I think this is pretty definitive here on whether or not. Well, see, it, it once you start to get this heavier stuff in there, it sort of changes it a little bit, but it still is kind of sitting on top of the surface as opposed to settling down into the snow the way we'd like it to or the way the way I, I try to have it do on the the crushed glass yeah so there now again this is not unexpected we were expecting a difference it's just it's not the most convenient difference in the world is anyone else really going to notice probably not but 
I think you can see a dramatic difference here. Look at the edges there versus that. So no question to me there's a big difference there. And we haven't even added the, the darker ghost tint version here. Much less having the the red liner be part of it. So here we go. I'm just going to add a dot or two of the red liner out there. And this is for that really deep, <coughs> sorry, dark kind of coagulated blood look. Let's see if we can't get a little dot here. That's it. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. It's it's not the end of the world, not totally unexpected, but that is I just can't do that particular effect on this stuff. It just does it does that instead. It just kind of spreads out and does not stay where I want it to. I mean, I I suppose, eh. It's just sitting on top of the snow. Again, it's not. I think a lot of folks would just be delirious with that as it is. It, it's all relative. It's, I guess, expectations really do play a lot. That's probably why a lot of people give up on their army projects. Well, I, we talk about that a lot. They have that expectation, and the expectation doesn't live up, or the result doesn't live up to the expectation, and that leads to the disappointment the inevitable betrayal uh, before we forget I just I'm gonna get it out here early where's the ah, the blood for the blood god stuff and that is gonna go up here and to me I can see a huge difference and there's two things the color is different it's not just darker but it's also more a little bit cooler than this one. It's also pretty darn thick. So we are about to find out now. We're going to thin it down like we said. Thin it down. And let's let's go. Let's see what happens. Now I'm going to make sure the focus is okay on this for you here. One second. All right, that's as good as I can get it. We're going to try this once more. Good grief. I'm just, I'm so used to the other type of snow effect. This is definitely, yeah, no matter how much I water it down, it just doesn't want to, it just wants to sit on top. And like we said, it's not a huge surprise. Now let's go a little bit thicker with it. And maybe we'll go just a tad darker here. We're going to add the same thing. We got the red liner. We're adding it to the... Yeah, it's... Like I said, it, that's not a horrible thing. It's, I can live with that result. It's just... As far as I'm concerned, I, I like what I can do with the other combination, I suppose, of materials. Now it is a little bit easier to make the dots in the snow here, maybe, than it is on the crushed glass, ironically enough. Then we'll just we'll go with that. And actually what I should start doing is putting these into the tray. So we're going to start to do that also, I believe. Well, we'll see if that one goes there or not. Uh, I believe that's a, yeah, that one definitely goes there. Uh, that one hasn't been done yet. Here's a, he goes there. Not all of these are actually getting the blood on their bases so much as it is on the movement tray. So they're very minimal. Now let's do a little bit of combination here. Let's try the. GSW True Blood with the GW Blood for the 
Blood God. Now that's the one thing that I can see too. I think with the yeah, see with the true blood, I can actually thin that down a bit. Can't do that with the blood for the blood god stuff. However, that's also thicker and less orange than the comparable. Okay, we're going again. Blood for blood god, and we'll just have that go down the side of the base here. So we'll start with that, and now we'll start. We'll get in there with some of the watered down. Yeah. So to me, you gotta have the combination of things. It's it's the same thing I, if I was using the like the Steinol Res Fresh Blood. I like that in combination. Not not on its own, but definitely in combination. So which one is that? That's number ten. So I, I may also do just a pure magnetizing video. Also have a couple of units and maybe work the magnets on those. That could be interesting for you to see. And actually, I'll do a combo. I'll, I'll do maybe the the type of magnets that I use for my bolt action stuff and also for then the, the separate kind of magnet stuff that I do on these guys here. So that, okay, I can see too I can't do the gradated blood spatter stuff. It's just here it, it wants to be all of one or the other. It just wants to be dark. And the only way, the only way I was ever going to find out about this was to give it a try. If I didn't try it out, I never would have known. I could conjecture and assume. And that's never actually a good thing. Now let's go go darker here I mean I sort of can ish but still definitely not to the level that I'd like to be able to so there's one more and this one has the we've got yellow snow here so we're going to turn the yellow snow into red again mostly the GSW watered down true blood For whatever reason, there's just a trail of blood here. They're extra bloodthirsty. Maybe he's been walking through the snow with these, and that's why they're extra bloody. I know some people, they just sort of, they get sort of hung up on that. that is, oh, you know, that's just, why are you doing that? To me, it's one way to add a, well, a splash of color to this, which is otherwise kind of on the drab side and a little bit of just contextual interest you know, something you just instead of just looking at a bunch of snow now let's try and get some of this now onto our movement tray so I'm going to back this out a bit here so you can see it play out on the tray yeah now But we'll just we'll try and use as many different things as we can here. Now the other thing that does happen, now maybe it's just that the other stuff's not quite dry, but it's sort of reactivating. So maybe that's it. I I guess I needed to leave it even longer to dry. That's if I try and water it down. So another lesson learned right there. Um, yeah, I just, uh, for me, if I want to do blood effects on the snow, I would definitely use the, the crushed glass. If that's not something I want to be doing or it's not part of the overall plan, well, then I don't have to worry. Alright, that's good enough. 
we need to extend this but especially here since he's actually holding his weapon over the movement tray here so we'll just add that there and also trying to make it look like there's a little bit of a blood trail here too like they're sort of advancing across this and to me it's it's this is kind of fun. I, I enjoy it. Now see here, I'm able to do almost a little bit of dry brushing. Now maybe that's where there's more of the flock. So that maybe that's another thing too to, to consider is just add more flock. And maybe that'll, that'll make a difference too. So again, trying to think of context here and maybe just guys advancing across this snow and leaving a little bit of a trail here and there. Here, maybe even on these logs. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. that trail mix over here too and now at this point I'm not even paying attention to which one that I'm using I'm just kind of using whatever comes to mind so again there's another little trail right here that we just did we need to clearly get a bunch over here actually this guy's darn near leaching some of that uh, blood out onto the other guy's base so now we're gonna do a little bit of a trail here And do we need to do that? Yeah, let's just do some of that right here for the heck of it. All right, that that to me does the trick there. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Now I have to remember where I'm thinning this down with the water it, it can reactivate the snow that's underneath there so let's just keep that in mind yeah see here where there's a little more of that flock I think I can just fade it out a bit more so maybe note to self use a little more of the flock on the snow if I want to do this and I don't want to do, you know, too much can be too much. We'll say that's good enough. And I just want to say thanks again to everybody for supporting me on the Patreon here. I, would, I wouldn't have all these different materials because what would be the need for me to try new stuff? I, I have something that works. You saw the blood effects video, right, where I was using the couple of different secret weapon wash colors and stuff and I have my I had a method then it worked fine using the realistic water if I didn't have to try and show people new things I'd never have to try new stuff myself and there is value in that there's certainly value in trying new things so thanks again I'll catch you on the the next basing techniques that's probably gonna be after ReaperCon I would say and I'm going to try and get into more of the, I just got some, some new Sculpey. So we're going to try and do some more Sculpey bases with the green stuff roll rollers and that, those different textures. So I'll catch you on the next basing techniques video.